bad it up to here when nursing a bunch of school kids like you. So now you're gonna find out what the army's all about. So, the exercise lasts for seven days. But I don't reckon you shower can last longer than three, cos we'll be looking pretty hard for you. If any of you fall and break a leg or something, just try and make yourself look conspicuous. We'll find you. But no guarantees about when. Right. First two. Off. Not here, but daddy's coming.
I don't believe it. I thought I'd make an early start, Kate. You were still working on it when I went to bed last night. This is ridiculous. I've nearly finished. So you keep saying. You've been called out a break in at Woodford Farm. And have a bath. You look like an industrial waste tip. <laughs> Nothing else was taken. Nothing of value. No, just that rubbish I told you about. <laughs> I'd have paid the bugger to have it had he but known. What's this? Looks like khaki or something. Yeah. It's a bit of old coat. <laughs> Breathe in and out and in and out once more in and out Sounds like a kettle on the boil in there. Have a listen. Daniel. It's all right, I've finished. His bronchitis has flared up again. <coughs> <coughs> Do that outside. He ought to be wrapped up warmer, you know. He's grown out of most of his clothes. And since Tom died, I can barely afford new ones. That's all I can do to keep the house warm. How's he behaving generally? Can't do a thing with him. It's bad enough before. But since those council people started pestering us... Council people? You know who I mean. It was you who put those busybodies onto us, wasn't it? Enjoying your breakfast, Claude? Um, I'm, I'm just uh, tasting the quality, Mr. Ronan. You know, you have, you have to try them before you buy them, don't you? You might get a bunch that's a bit unjuicy. What are you looking at? That's not a bad coat, that. What is? Oh, I, I, I've had it for years, you know. It's, it's as good as new. Does Narf look good on you? Oh, well, it's, you have to know how to wear them, don't you? Because uh, are, are in the forces, you know. Can I see how it hangs around the back? Oh, I will call you one. Hey, you're not looking for one of these, are you? Well, I am, as it happens. What, 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 do you, what do you want? One exactly the same as this? No, one with a bit missing. In fact, one worn by whoever broke into Woodfall Farm last night. I told Dr Ferrenby about you. Not to interfere, Mr Sanford. To help you. You and Daniel. 
We don't need his help, and I never asked for yours. Dr. Ferenby is on a new council committee that's been set up specially to help people in your situation. I don't want handouts. Tom was dead against it. We paid our way or went without. And what about Daniel? He's not in good health. He's missing school. I do my best. What can I do? The boy won't even accept his father's dead. He needs expert counselling. And you can't provide it without help. They're no help. The questions, the horrible things they try and get Daniel to say against me. You had no right to interfere, Dr. Rowan. Constable, that lad running off there, little Danny Sanford, he just nicked one of my pen knives. Right, Daniel, let's have it. I'm impressed. Now pick it up. I said, pick it up, Daniel. Hello. Is Mrs. Sandler with you? Yes. What is it? I'm afraid Daniel's in a spot of bother. Why? What's he done? He stole this from the hardware shop. Stole it? Is that true, Daniel? Yes. But why? You know it's wrong to steal. It's not stealing. Of course it's stealing. It wasn't your knife. It's the one Dad promised to buy me. He'll pay for it when he comes back. Stop it. Don't, Don't say, say that. Sanford. You mustn't say such things. Look, we'll have a word with Mr. Diprose. He'll be happy just to get his property back. I don't want this happening again, Dan. Would you understand? Nick, could you run Mrs. Sanford and Daniel home? It's all right. It's no bother, Mrs. Sanford. We can pop in and see Mr. Diprose on the way. Swine. Well then. Not open yet, Mr. Greengrass. Uh, aren't you? Good job I am then. What about them? What's that? The Greengrass breed of chicken. Chicken? Yeah. Especially bred for the Aidens Field Arms, eh, George? Didn't manage the rabbit then, Claude. No, I got one. Some bugger poached it out of the snare, didn't he? <laughs> that makes a change. Well, one man, but I saw him make off weird. Hey, wait on. I reckon he's been a bit busy somewhere else, I know. Hello? 
Could I speak to Mr. Sanford? Dad's not here. How about your mum? She's outside. Who are you? Daniel. I can't wait, Daniel. Your dad, will he be back soon? Don't know. Could you do me a favour? Could you tell your dad Ken Marston called? Ken, you got that? Tell him I have to see him. Tell him I'll meet him at our den. Our den, you got that? Who was it, Daniel? Someone for Dad. Don't tell lies. It's true, it's Ken. He wants to see Dad. Give me a message for Stop him. Stop it! Don't say things like that! Go on! Out of my sight! beginning to feel all I'm good for is answering your damn telephone calls. Sorry? If that car was a woman, I'd scratch its eyes out. I have to put the time in, Kate. That was Blakedon. He wants you out at Lord Ashfordley's lodge. Another break-in. A bit of poaching's one thing, Sergeant. Part of the tradition, fine, that's understood. But this makes me angry. I can understand that, sir. Well, it's got to be stopped, especially as our syndicate shoots are about to start, understood? Right, sir. Right. Carry on. Thank you, sir. His Lordship is not a happy man, Rowan. Some tin food, a few bottles of booze, curtains, paraffin. It's out of the crime of the century, Sarge. Hmm. Well, no vehicle tracks. Must be someone local. Someone who knows this area. Greengrass. He never made those prints, Sarge. Oh. An expert on his footwear, are you? Well, look at the stuff that's been taken. I mean, curtains and paraffin, stuff like that. It's like survival gear. Someone who's living rough. Well, he's certainly no boy scout. Are you Ken? Daniel Sanford. Is anyone with you? Did your dad send you up here? Yeah? No. But you gave him my message. Dad's not here. Where the hell is he then? He's away, but he's coming back. When? Don't know. Good many on that, Alf. Looks more like a minus to me. I don't know why you read that rubbish. Who said I'm reading it? When I was your age, it was popular mechanics. Alf, you were never my age. Well? Well, I've tried everywhere, Sarge. Missing persons, you name it. I even tried the army. They've got a few soldiers gone over the hill, but they know where they are. Hmm. Can't be them, then. They don't think so. All the same, I still think there's someone living rough in Ashfordley Forest. How old are you, Daniel? Seven. I was nine when Tom, your dad and me, were last year. Why didn't you stay with him? Lived in London, didn't I? Sent up here on holiday at your dad's house. We was great mates. But he didn't come back. That's how it goes, Daniel. Often thought about him, though. 
I might have. Was it your dad who told you about his place? Yes, it's our special place too. I suppose that's all right. But you'll have to keep the secret too. Promise. Come in. Ah, Kate, okay. news of the Sanfords. Nowhere near the whole story, but enough to know trouble when it rears its head. What's going on? Social services looked into the case purely as a formality, but that is no longer so. Mrs. Sanford is now the object of an in-depth investigation, Kate. Why? Kate, there is a strong belief that Mrs. Sanford is unstable. No more unstable than anyone who's just lost their husband and is living from hand to mouth. Helen Sanford loves Daniel. Their view is that Daniel is seriously disturbed, deeply hostile to his mother. If they decide, and I think they have done already, that the boy is at risk, he will be taken into care, Kate. Take Daniel. They can do that. Take my child. Only if they can prove you're an unfit mother. But I love Daniel. I know that. You did this. If it wasn't for Look, you, it... nothing's decided yet. What you have to do... I don't know what to do! Tom would. If he was here. But he's not. Just when I needed him most, this stupid fucker dies on me! I can't forgive him and then I can't! <laughs> Morning, Jules. Good morning, Nick. You heard any good gossip lately? Depends what you mean by good, really. Any strangers in the area? Or more specifically, strangers in Ashfordley Forest? Well, you could do worse than have a word with Claude Greengrass. Really? Hmm. You mentioned seeing someone up that way. Yeah, I was quite put out about it. It seems he lost some property. But was it his to lose, then? Eh? Ah, well, that I wouldn't like to say. Well, let's see if he can enlighten me. Gina with a bloke. That's perfectly natural, Nick. No, not with this bloke. What do you mean? He's the probation officer from Ashfordley. That takes all sorts. Where are you off to? Have a world of green grass. For the benefit of Mr. Kite, there will be a show tonight on trampoline. Over men and horses, hoops and garters, lastly through a hogshead of real fire. In this way, Mr. K will challenge the world. The celebrated Mr. K performs his feet on Saturday at Bishop's Gate. The Hendersons will dance and sing as Mr. Kite flies through the ring. Don't be late. Let us K and H assure the public their production will be second to none. And of course, Henry the Horse dances the wall. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Go on, get out of it. Go on. Get up. Go on. Get up. The band begins at ten to six when Mr. K performs his without sound. It's handy with that sound. Eleven. Very collectible. <laughs> we can find home for that, can't we? Do for a rabbit, he nicked. No, and Reg. Oh. I'm 
time no see. Hi. I've, uh, I've got a bit of something you might be interested in. He, he's still doing a bit of collecting. You know. Bang, bang. <laughs> well, we all have our hobbies, Claude. Ah, right. Well, cop that little lot, then. You've got the piece that goes with this, then? Well, my, my, my lips are sealed, but I think if anybody showed willing, you know, I think a fiver might reserve it for you. All right. Fiver. It's reserved. I'll, uh, I'll see you. Come on. Your mum, she don't know me. And anyway, I'm in a bit of trouble. Your pit. You won't go away again. Told you. I'm here to see your dad. You will find out when he'll be back, won't you, Daniel? It's important. Yes? Oi, Claude, huh? Find the life out of me. I've been looking for you all morning. What do you want? Well, I thought you might be able to assist me in my inquiries. Uh, not again. What is it this time? Well, I gather you've seen someone in Ashworthy Forest. Someone stealing your property. Oh, you mean that chap you thought were me? Hey, it's good, isn't it, eh? Somebody's only got a brick wind round here and it's blame green grass time. But you have seen him? Ah, only the back end of him. Well, can you give me a description? Well, not really, no. I mean, I, mean I, I, didn't, I didn't really see that much of him, and that's the truth. Whereabouts in the forest? No question about it. NATO issue FN semi automatic round. Recently fired. Bloody dangerous weapon. Is it one of yours? We lost one in exercise 40 miles away. Booked out to a Sergeant Nichols. He took a nasty fall. We found him, but no sign of the weapon so far. Was he using live ammunition, this Sergeant Nichols? Hardly. It was escape and evasion, not World War III, Sergeant. Because whoever fired that major weren't using blanks. We'll be looking into that. I'm glad. Have you spoken to the sergeant, sir? Not up to it yet. So that could be from a different rifle? Unlikely. They're restricted to the army. Do you think this man could be one of yours, then? I don't see how. No one's been reported here, Wall. This escape and evasion exercise, sir, how long are they out for? Seven days. Well, our suspect showed up three days ago. As Constable Rowan implies, one of your men could be AWOL, but you don't know that yet. 
May I use your phone, Sergeant? Well, that put the wind up him. Let's hope they can identify him. I bloody hope so, too. A rogue squaddy on the loose with a weapon like that doesn't bear thinking about. Kate? Yeah? You still want to know what attracted Gina to Aidan's field? Ashford Lee Probation says she was meant to report her presence here to me. Why? She was convicted for possession of stolen property in Liverpool. What? She got probation on condition she lived here with her uncle. You were meant to report your presence here to me. I would have told you, Mr Rowan. But you didn't. But I had not to hide, but... Well, my Uncle George was keen to keep it a bit hushed, like... But you know what they're like around here? Yeah, but you still should have reported to me. You won't have no worry with me. I'm not about to let my Uncle George down, am I? It was all a mistake, you know. It always is, Gina. It's true. Some fella asked me to look after some gear for him. I was like to know it was nicked. So why do you think he gave it to you? It must be my trust in nature. Daniel, can't you go and play outside or in your room or something? If you knock anything over with that... Damn you, Daniel! I told you not to do that! Why can't you do as you're told for once? What you doing up there? Waiting for you. Get down, it's dangerous. Trooper Kenneth Marston, Londoner. You failed to show up then? That, and because Sergeant Nichols talked. The one who had the accident? No accident. Nichols' story is that Marston attacked him and made off with the weapon. He's violent, is he, this Marston? No record of it until now. What we do know is there was no love loss between Marston and this Sergeant Nichols. Apparently, this Marston has made an official complaint against him for intimidation and bullying. The CEO was looking into it when this accident happened. So what's Marston doing running around with live ammo? It seems that Nichols was holding on to it without authorization. Why? Sergeant Nichols has yet to explain that. I don't even know your name. Ken Marston. A very old friend of your husband's, Mrs. Sanford. It was you who telephoned Daniel? Yes. Told you were dead. I know. I thought... I'm sorry, love. It's very important I see Tom, Mrs. Sanford. Daniel said he's away just now. But if you could just tell me when he might be back. My husband's dead, Mr. Marston. I'm off to the Sanford place, Nick. There's been an accident. Right. That's him, is it? Yeah, Londoner called Marston. Well, what's he doing here? No one knows. The way he's putting himself about, it's hard to believe he's a stranger to Aidensville. Mr. Greengrass, isn't it? Who, who wants to know? We're friends of Reginald, Mr. Greengrass. He's got first refusal on some merchandise of yours, isn't that right? Uh, 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 no, not, 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 not exactly, no. Uh, well, he's sold his interest on to us, Mr. Greengrass. Well, it's not really like Red thinks, though. <laughs> not to worry. We brought the means uh, to deal. Like. Uh, yeah, I, I know that. But you see, what, what you don't understand is, I, I mean, I, I, would, I would, I would, just pull in his leg. That's all. You know, <laughs> it's like, like a bit of a joke. <laughs> a joke. We're not here to be amused, Mr. Greengrass, but to buy what we've come for. Where is it? Tom died four months ago. He'd never been ill. Then one morning. He walks out into the yard, and minutes later, he's dead. Heart attack. Really sorry. If I'd have known, I wouldn't have troubled you. It was wrong of Daniel not to tell you. I've tried to make him understand, but he won't have it. 
hates me for even trying. Losing Tom was bad enough, but... What did your own child tear himself apart inside? That's the worst of it. That, that, that one bullet, we're, we're all there. Honest, and that's the truth. Or maybe you sold it on to someone else. Isn't that it, Mr Greengrass? I'm, I'm not likely to have a rifle and a load of damn bullets, and I don't talk damn daft. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> you bastard! Go! 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 That's one too many, Mr. Greengrass. Don't just stand there. Go and fetch help, you daft article. Your mum is really upset, Daniel. It's not my fault. I was about your age when I lost my dad. Mum couldn't cope, so they sent me up here on holiday. I was a right pain. How? I told lies all the time, didn't I? Wanted your dad to think I had a life just as good as his. But he wouldn't have it. He knew it weren't true. It used to make me really mad. Why? Wanted us to be friends, didn't I? Only that wasn't going to happen so long as I kept on lying. I was doing the worst kind of lying, Daniel. Lying to myself. It weren't easy to get out of it, but I did, with help from your dad. I'm telling you this because you've got to do the same, Daniel. I know it ain't easy, but this pretending about your dad, that's a kind of lying too. And it has to stop. It's hurting your mum, and it's bad. Really bad for you. And it's not what your dad would have wanted, is it? Is it, Daniel? I have to go. Why? I'm in trouble, Mrs. Sanford. That's why I came to see Tom. What trouble? The worst. Don't go, Ken. Mum will help you. Won't you, Mum? I don't know how I can. Dr. Rowan won't be here long. You can wait in there. Mrs. Sanford? Mrs. Sanford. Dr. Rowan. Hello, Daniel. Hi. Been in the wars, have you? So, did you recognise them? No, they're gone. Oh, come on, lads. Give me some air. Here you are, Claude. Get that down, you. Yeah. You don't really feel a benefit, do you, when you just had your face kicked in? You live. Well, I know, but I, uh, I might have spoiled my looks. Improve them more, like. Let me have a word with him, George. Come on, Gina, let the constable do his work. So you don't know who they were, and you've got no idea why they attacked you? No. Well, I think it's disgusting, though, attacking somebody who's nearly an old-age pensioner. It's, it's not safe to walk the streets. Nothing to do with this, was it? Look, this isn't poaching or bent car dealing. There's an armed deserter out there. So you tell me any stories and you're in trouble.
How is he? He'll be fine. I can't thank you enough for what you did. Even more for what you said to Daniel. So what kind of trouble are you in then? I killed a man. That's why I came to find Tom. I need his help. That doctor's still here. She's poking about in that barn out there. You found it. Well done, Rowan. He's found the weapon. We've got Marston's connection, Sarge. It's the Sanfords. Yeah, yeah the family that lives near the forest. Right, I'll get onto the army. They can concentrate their search there. I'll get over there, Sarge. Kate's there. Yeah, I want her out of the way in case this turns nasty. What are you doing here, Dr. Rowan? The door was open. Is this your husband's work? Yes. He was a clever man. When he could be bothered to take pay in work. Did he make all this furniture, too? It's just some old stuff Tom bought over the years and did up. When the council came to see you, did they look in here? No. No one looks in here. Now, if you don't mind, Could I tell the council about this place, Mrs. Sanford? What? Have them busybodies picking over Tom's things? It'd help your case. Sorry, Dr. Rowan. I don't want you interfering again. Listen. I've done listening to you on this subject. Do you want to lose, Daniel? Have not taken into care? Carry on like this and believe me, it'll... Just go, Dr. Rowan. What's this about Daniel? She keeps saying the council want to take him into care. In their care? Sling Daniel into a children's home? They won't. I won't let them. That's what my mum said. But they took me all the same. Killed her too, I reckon. As for me, destroyed anything I had in the way of a life. <laughs> Don't let it happen to Daniel. Don't let him put Tom's kid into one of them hell holes. Mrs. Sanford. Daniel being taken into care is not a problem you can walk away from. You can't shut it out or pretend they can't do it. They can. <coughs> Look, all I need is something to force them to review your case. And you have it. Those things in the barn are worth money. Real money, Mrs. Sanford. <coughs> It alters your financial circumstances. Who is that man? Both the army and the police are looking for a man who's been seen in these woods. He's armed and dangerous. He's none of those things. He was my husband's friend. I'm going to call the no, he's a good man, Dr. Rowan. He's not what they say he is. <laughs> Where's Marston? In the barn over there. The army are on their way, Mrs. Sanford. He won't give himself up to them. He killed a man, Mr. Rowan, some brutal army sergeant who tried to shoot him. You're wrong, and so is he. The sergeant's alive. Alive? But Ken thinks... I've got to tell him. I'll deal with him. You just wait there. Marston! Come on, it's over. Time to give yourself up. For what? To do life in an army, Nick? You'll be lucky. You're out of date, Marston. Sergeant Nichols is alive. Don't give me that! He's alive and in trouble. Is that what I told you to say? Look, they know he had it in for you. It won't take them long to work out what he was doing with that live ammo he nicked. You've got a good case, Marston. All we've really got against you is these few stunts you pulled round here. So why blow it now? Please do as he says, Ken. Listen to her, Marston. You're not on your own, you know. There's a woman and child out here who care what happens to you, even if you don't. Come on, Marston. Ken!
How'd it go? Well, with Alex's help and with Helen and Daniel starring like you wouldn't believe. And with a bit of a nod and a touch from you. Anyway, the case against Mrs. Sanford is suspended indefinitely. That's great news. It hasn't really sunk in yet. I've got something for you, Daniel. Ken wanted you to have it. Oh, thanks. That's very kind of you. Thanks, Dr. Owen. You're welcome. See you soon. Yeah. Well, now, can I give you two a lift home? That's all right, thanks, Alex. I'll do the honours. Right. Well, I'll be off then. Bye. If you think I'm going to ride Pillion on that clapped-out bike of yours... No. You could ride up front with me. In that. Do you want if you don't want money? What do you want if you don't want gold? Say what you want and we'll give it you double and wish you wanted my love, baby. What do you want if you don't want ermine? What do you want if you don't want girls? Say what you want and I'll give it you double and wish you wanted my love, baby. Well, I'm offering you this heart of mine, but only do. You won't, oh boy, you're making a fool of me. One of these days when you need my kiss, and one of these days when you want me to, don't turn around, goes I'll be missing. And then you want my love, baby. Well, I'm offering you a diamond ring, but only. Wasn't that the car you sold him for? Sold him. Give him, you mean. Took advantage of my good nature. Worth a packet now, I reckon. Do you do requests? When you need my kiss and one of these days when you want me to Don't turn around cause I'll be missing And you want to my love, baby